Joining us now is 314 Research co-founder Warren Pies and Unlimited CEO and CIO Bob Elliott. Guys, happy Friday. Bob, we had tough macro news that keeping yields high and pressuring stocks and then decent earnings boosting some stocks and now good macro news. So what do you say? What, is it, what does it look like to you from here? Well, I think a lot of the key themes from the macro perspective that have been in place for the last few months are still firmly in place. I mean, the employment report uh, still showed, you know, 175,000 jobs. It's pretty good. Uh, if you look at the last three months, that's 240,000 jobs. And that, you know, is about the same that we've seen over the last 18 months, which has averaged about 250,000 jobs. The unemployment rate was essentially flat month over month. You put that all together uh, and you see something uh, that continues the picture of pretty good growth uh, coming out of the U.S. and that continuing uh, at the same time that those inflationary pressures, they aren't yet resolved. And without resolving those inflationary pressures, it's going to be pretty tough for the Fed to give the type of easing that the equity market is looking for. Oh, and yet, and yet, Warren, you say that it's important to remember the Fed's motivated to cut even without these job numbers. So why do you say that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that it's there is an election year and I don't I don't want to bury the lead. You no, know, ultimately, we came in this year pretty bullish and it was because we thought that people who are in power want to stay in power. And there is a motivation behind Fed policy um, and in, in policymakers in general. So I, I think that's what's operating the background. You take Powell at the press conference this week. And I mean, it was a revealed preference that he really wants to cut. He, he had every opportunity to open the door to hikes. Uh, you know, he, he was he was clear. He said, we're going to hold for a bit. But I think that if you read the tea leaves and this is what the market's looking at is that he's going to interpret any data he can in a uh, in a dovish way, I think, and, and look for an excuse to, to cut. So to me, that's the big story is the Fed wants to cut. I don't think the data is going to allow them to. Honestly, I, I don't think the data is going to if they stick to their first quarter SEP of two point six percent or PC by the end of the year. I don't really see a path there, what, given what's happening in housing, but the Fed wants to cut, makes it a tricky market. Well, let me not get, Bob, uh, conspiracy theory-ish too much, but let's say the Fed were to cut and then it were to become clear that they cut too soon, and then you head into a Trump presidency where at least the rumblings are that uh, he's got some designs on, on the Fed. I mean, it's not even just rumblings. Uh, when he was president, he pretty clearly jawboned the Fed. That, that wouldn't be good, Bob, either, would it? Well, I think the main place that that would show up is uh, is starting to affect term premiums uh, as well as uh, people's risk premium and financial assets. If it's uncertain what inflation is going to be, for instance, if it looks like the Fed is starting to abandon their 2 percent target uh, and won't uh, forcefully move towards that direction when necessary, then what that's going to cause is going to cause a lot of uncertainty in the bond market. We're going to see a steepening of the yield curve. That's likely to hurt all financial assets as risk premiums expand. And so actually, I think it probably would lead to a pretty counterintuitive or counterproductive move uh, if the Fed or the next administration started to pursue you know, aggressively easy policy relative to what conditions would, uh, would provide for. Warren, energy, the weakest S&P sector today, it was about flat, uh, whereas technology led up 3 percent. In this economic environment that continues to be decently strong, where do you see energy going now? Yeah, I think that um, there's probably a 90 percent chance that crude oil is top for the year. So I, I really don't want to be involved in in energy and as anything other than a portfolio hedge, because as we've said before, with geopolitical uh, pressures that we've seen, energy is kind of a hedge for your equity portfolio. But on a standalone basis, it's not interesting to me. The other big factor, I think, in Q2 is if um, if the Fed does find itself in a position unable to cut, I think this, this you know, we have other global central banks ready to cut, and that basically could pressure the dollar. That would be negative for for risk assets, including energy uh, and, and, and oil in general. And so to me, uh, yeah, I, I think that the top is in for crude oil if, unless we have some kind of geopolitical flare up. And it's always a, a losing bet to, ne to bet on that. And negative for risk assets, Bob, I guess would mean positive for gold. Ah, gold, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I think I think part of the story that uh, that, you know, that that there is a risk. There's a real risk that. Uh, that the Fed doesn't deliver 
uh, the level of monetary tightness that's necessary to really bring inflation down uh, long term to that 2% target. And so um, that's why when you when you look at that diversified portfolio uh, and you want to protect yourself against monetary policy that's too easy, you know, it's going to be tough to get that in bonds. Stocks may feel the effect. But we saw pretty, uh, pretty directly gold respond to Fed, you know, to, to Chairman Powell's statements that looked a little dovish. And so it's an important component of the overall picture. I, I know it's rallied a fair amount, but it's still relatively cheap uh, on a long term basis, on a real basis, uh, particularly if you consider the risk of uh, overly aggressive monetary easing.